God, how are you? What happened? I don't know. It was a weird intro. I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. You know, it, soon that technical advisor will be on board and we'll, we'll not have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> How's it going tonight, my friend? Uh, it's going very well, actually. I'm having a great night. How about yourself? I'm doing great. So who are we? Why are we here? I'm, so, I'm, I'm feeling some people might be looking at us for the first time wondering who these funny guys in the robes are. Yeah, well, I mean, the robes are pretty snazzy, if you ask me. Snazzy, that's a good word, right? <laughs> that's a good uh, word. No, that's a great <laughs> word. We are the Land Geek guys, and this is Nightcap. And uh, it's time to kick back with a drink and talk land investing. Right. Uh, near the end of a very busy week, I'm sure, for a lot of us. And uh, we started the show a few months back because we figured there were a bunch of people uh, – burning the midnight oil and needed to, needed to take a break and have some goofy fun. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, uh, uh, a content, a little bit of humor. It's a good mix. Uh, it's 10 o'clock on the East coast. So yeah, it is a little nightcap and uh, we're going to talk all things land investing. And for this evening, Scott, what are you drinking? I am drinking a hell lager from uh, the Surly Brewing Company in St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, that sounds pretty manly, not as manly as a, um, I don't even know. Bay, what is this? It's a dessert drink. This, a Bailey's espresso. It's not a, not to be confused with a martini. A Bailey's. Oh my gosh, that's not, not to, right at all. Not to be confused with a martini. Yeah, exactly. The martini that you you gave me <laughs> hell about for weeks <laughs> after I drank that on nightcap. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. So Scott, um, tonight's show, you posted an interesting topic. Um, what, what was it again? So the title of tonight's show is Swing the Bat, Take the Leap. It's all about massive action. Well, okay. So, so, so uh, wh why? Why is this about massive? Why? Swing the Bat, why? Why? That, that's what do you exactly mean why? Right. What's this why? Yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly right, Mike. It's, it's why. It's, it's what's your why. Oh, what's your why? Okay. So we're talking massive action. So what we're getting at here is you, you, you seem to be making a correlation between what your why is and the ability to take massive action. That's exactly you. right. So a lot of, a lot of people, uh, it hits them like a ton of bricks. They wake up one day and they're like, man, I'm not where I want to be in life. And they realize what their why is like that. Like they just, they want, they want to be free. They want to, quit working for the man. They, they don't want a job anymore. Okay. Want more time with their family. So I think before you take massive action, you just need to identify that why, and you may have all sorts of whys, right? You may have this huge uh, long-term why, but you may have all these short-term whys as well that will hopefully take place in a, in a short amount of time. But so that, that propels people, I think, into massive action. And, um, it's always, you know, I think in order to take massive action, you need that why to motivate you. Well, that makes entirely a lot of sense. It really does. I think that, you, you know, you, you need to know why you're doing this, right? You need to have, you know, I guess it could be argued you could just go plugging along because I want to make money, right? And, but I think uh, most people that do well at this business do have some sort of higher ideal, something they're stretching for, whether it is to, you know, assist their family or to, uh, you know, there's a number of reasons, right, that can, I'm sure for many of us, it is revolving around family and uh, making a better life for our loved ones and spending more time. I think that is something that uh, has truly uh, been at the forefront of my why is that I want to be available. I want to have a life that I can experience around my family more. And so uh, the more that this land investing has kicked into gear, the less I have to do of, you know, things like overtime and extra work. And it's just, it allows things to settle back and relax. So um, it really is. It, I feel blessed to do this business. And I think that uh, anybody who does this business for a long period of time and enjoys the successes of it does feel the same way. It's humbling. I mean, this is, it's a, it's a unique process. You build it yourself, right? This is something that you, you, you lift yourself up by your own bootstraps, as they say, you create this and uh, having a why definitely makes things happen quicker and it can allow you to take massive action there's a you complete me section right there done <laughs> is that movie again mike 
Uh, it's Jerry Maguire. It's a her. It's a sporty a sporting movie or something like it's that. A love story. It's, it's a love, love story. story. It's a love story. So let's talk a little bit about this massive action. Now we clarified that to make massive action occur, it's great to have a why, a desire, a reason. Uh, but okay, let's talk about getting to the nuts and bolts of it. What 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 would you have for me? Um, you know, if we were going to talk about taking massive action relative to the land business in general, like what do we? What, what's some? What, what's a good jumping off point here? So I think a good jumping off point is uh, you, in order to take massive action, in order to reach these goals, at some point you are going to have to step outside of your comfort zone. You need to push your limits. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's all about um, taking on a little bit more than, than you think you can handle. Okay. Uh, and, and, and by doing that, you cause, you cause yourself to take um, steps in maybe a little bit of an uncomfortable direction. But in the end, when you reach a goal, it feels so amazing. So uh, an analogy I use, I use patient analogies a lot, right? Because I'm a physical therapist. So, okay. you know, uh, even, even people with short legs can take big steps, right? We like I had short legs in all these areas of the land business, but I took big steps within those areas. Um, another one that I always tell my patients is, you know, we got to push your limits in order to get better. We have to push your limits, but not go over your limits. So there's a fine line there. You need to realize where that breaking point is, but in order to get better, in order to move forward, in order to succeed, to, 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 to get better in all these different areas, you need to push your limits because if you don't push your limits, you're not going to get to where you want to get. Yeah, that makes total sense. You know, one of the first brick walls people encounter in our business and, uh, you know, Mark talks a lot about this is, uh, you know, mailing, right. You know, uh, county research mailing, and really that's where the first massive action has to happen, right. There's so many people that, um, initially will get caught up with this paralysis by over analysis where they're, they'll struggle to put that first mailing out there trying to, um, you know, just get everything perfect. And we always hear what Scott Todd says, right. Uh, done beats perfect, right. Get, get this done. Um, and I always tell people too, when I talk to them, I said, really, you know, deal flow solves everything. And, and, and it's true. The more you, you, you know, you got to cultivate, you got to take so much massive action, right? That you have uh, literally just think about the bottom of a pond, right? And there's all these, uh, you know, these, think of them like bobbers. I don't know, something, these little bubbles of deals at the bottom, right? And what happens is, is slowly after lots and lots of mailing, some of these start to rise. And then you're like, oh, these are the potential deals. Oh, this one's got a probate issue. Boom, that goes aside. This one's taxes are too way, way high. This one wants too much money. But then slowly some of these things begin to surface until one pops up to the top and it pops up like, like a bobber on top of the water. There's your deal. But you, to get to that point, you have to have a lot of stuff at the bottom, a lot of crap at the bottom going on, as I say. And one of my favorite flowers is the lotus because it's known to grow out of the mucky water right it grows out of all the the mud and the dirt and a beautiful flower comes out so all that muck and all that craziness in the and it's an analogy to me is mailing you got to take massive action on mailing create deal flow and that will solve all your wonder the wondering you have about will this work is this going to happen deal flow solves everything yeah for sure um deal flow solves everything i'm going to stir uh, my drink now with my cinnamon stick you're so oh, for crying out loud Carry on. Sorry, did I distract you? I'm sorry. I'm so not impressed tonight with your <laughs> Just be prepared to get hell for two weeks for drinking whatever you're drinking. Anyway, yeah, you know, uh, more deals than you can handle. Mark says that all the time. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an intimidating thing, but it's a beautiful thing. It pushes you forward. You know, I always tell my patients too, like, you know, when you're, when you're rehabbing your shoulder, when you're rehabbing your knee, when you're doing these low back exercises, um, it, you're, you may experience a little bit of pain when you're doing this particular stretch or activity, you know, right. it's okay to experience a little bit of pain as long as you're not worse after. So I, you know, it's really analogous to a lot of things we experience. Like when, when I was first doing due diligence, I mean, it was a pain, right. But I got through it and felt better. Right. Um, when I was first learning how to sell people on the phone uh, to, to 
to, you know, sell a parcel of land over the phone, man, it was painful to me because I had never done anything like that before. But in right. the end, I was better. Right. So I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just kind of one of those things. You got to step outside your comfort zone, push your limits and, um, you know, you, you'll get there. You got, you just got to take on more than you can handle. I love it. Scott, any comments on Facebook? You're the Facebook comment master. What do we got? Yeah, we, we don't have a lot of viewers tonight. I don't know what's going on. That's we have okay. our regulars though. Barbara Thibodeau is here. You know, you know, thank you, Barbara, for coming. You know, we live, we live pretty strong in the rerun world. So oh, yeah, for sure. a lot of us, watch, you know, it's a little late um, for some people or whatnot, or maybe in the West Coast is a little early at seven o'clock for a nightcap, but you know, it's okay. They'll be watching us on the reruns. Maybe it's the time change. We went to, we went to 10 o'clock instead of 1030. <laughs> Could be it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So uh, any comments? Barbara, uh, yeah. We got a comment from, uh, from Jim. He says, uh, I have found the buy side to be much easier than the sell side. For the sell side, it is a matter of just, is it a matter of just keeping up on the marketing? Ah. Is steady posting 80% of the battle? Nice. I like it. It's like they say diet's 80% of the battle for, for you know, getting that body you want, right? Is, you know, that's a great question. And, you know, the buy side is the first brick wall you hit. And so you overcome that quicker, right? So, you know, some people are left a little exhausted when it comes to the next wall, but you know, this is like some one of those obstacle courses, right? But you need to have your team around you and the team being in this case, our land geek community to keep supporting you and keep encouraging you with their success stories. So I think that the beauty of our business is conveyed in the stories of others succeeding. And that is going to allow you to get the stamina to keep hitting that next wall. So, you know, marketing, yeah. We talked about uh, we talked about uh, the mailing and the massive action. The same thing. We, we always say there's two things, right, Scott? The M and M's, the mailing and the marketing. So, uh, massive action on both of those is is real. Um, and I think that's kind of a we're going to revisit that in a, in a little bit because we have a I think it's on our fourth point this evening. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I, I think it'll answer J Jim's question a little further. So I think. Yes, it's it's it is a brick wall. Yes, it can try to knock you down, but no, it doesn't have to defeat you. So should I wait to comment until later on that? No, I don't. Well, if you want to, well, you know, we we'll just hold off of that. Uh, Go ahead. We'll, all right, Jim. We, Jim, to be continued. All right, to be continued, Jim. I think we Jim, promise. I think we promise to answer. I think it's time for a segment, don't you? Yeah, we're just trying to get Jim to hang on so we can keep our viewers. So, like, if we give too much out of the beginning, he may not hang on to the end. So, Jim, we're going to answer that question. Exactly. <laughs> we'll be back in a few here, Jim. All right. So, we haven't done a Facebook quote or question of the week for a couple of weeks. So, I thought we should do that tonight. We got a good, uh, good quote from Aaron Williams. Trusty right. Aaron Williams here. Uh, Bayland? That, that Aaron Bayland, Williams? Bayland, yeah. So... He was talking about uh, VA hiring and uh, he posted this on July 17th. He said, if you are new, don't fear hiring a VA, but ask questions and don't be afraid to ask for a test. I just had posted a job to do a simple scrub on a new list. As I was asking, take a look at the sheet and give me your best estimate of how long you feel it would take you to complete the job. Okay. While others were telling me two days, one week, 30 hours, one girl told me already done. I had her send me a sample and it matched my own that I had done as a test key. I hired her on the spot. She asked for $5 and I gave her $10. Boom. List scrubbed. Now on to offers. Who do you think I will invest to test as one of my offer VAs? Very nice. So that's all about exactly what we just talked about pushing your limits, stepping outside your comfort zone, taking on more than you can handle. Yeah. So it's and a little bit intimidating sometimes hiring a VA to do aspects of the business that you are so comfortable with that you are maybe a little bit uh, tentative to, to delegate. You know, that's awesome. And it kind of reminds me of something else that helps, helps with massive action, having uh, um, kind of, What's the next quote? Because this is where it's going to play. Mimi just did an incredible class uh, for the, uh, you know, the, uh, intake the yeah, intake manager. And so how 
for some people out there wondering how come how could they see that like i think this is important to bring up like you know how if i wanted to be able to see what she did right i want to be able to participate we have these monthly calls to action that are awesome uh we we had Scott Toss on the beginning with uh, the crowdsourcing and marketing and then went over to Eric with a Zapier and now Mimi did intake manager. These are going to happen every month. These are things that take your business and um, uh, just going to propel it forward. I, I can't wait to see what Tate brings out. This is it's going to be amazing, right? This, these are things that really – so how would I even – let's talk about that because part of massive action is having the kind of confidence to step into these new realms and that does come with um, – <laughs> say it the mentorship i keep kind of like you know i, I oh, know you're trying to get me to answer no no but I, I know our next point so let's 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 parlay into that next point yeah let's go ahead so, yeah so i mean it 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 takes a lot of self-discipline to step outside your comfort zone but it really helps if you have a jedi master on your team right if yes. you have a mentor on your team right everyone needs a yoda when 900 years old, you reach. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Look as good, dude. No, that wasn't good. But anyway, yeah, wow. everybody needs a everybody needs a Yoda. Mark Podolsky needed a Yoda, right? Right. Mike Zano needed Yoda. <laughs> yeah, Todd was my Yoda. Right, right. So this is something that is huge, right? The 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 power of mentorship. So Let's just talk for a second. Let me know. I want to know how I can get into and see these type of content classes it is, you know, and obviously they can talk to us more about it, but can you give me a brief summary of what that, what that's about? What, what is there a, is there a name for that? What is this? Yes. So what you are alluding to my friend yeah, I'm alluding is to it. Uh, first of all, let's, let's preface it with this. There are some exciting things happening in the land geek community. And in about a month from now, you're going to see some major changes. Uh, but we, we've been talking about this for quite a while. It's been taking a little bit of time to roll out. But we are transitioning into uh, top gun phase here in, uh, in the land geek community. So there's going to be an opportunity for people to, uh, to have access to some really amazing content-rich classes every month here in this community. So as you had alluded to, you know, Scott Todd may t talk about crowdsourcing ads. Eric Peterson may talk about using certain type of Gmail filters and Zapier, fil Zapier, what are, you, what are you laughing at over there? You always no. distract me with your- <laughs> No, because I actually logged on to the comments and, and uh, I just saw that Mimi posted something. So it kind of made me think uh -huh. we were just talking about her. And also I, I'm gonna give her a shout out. Didn't she just leave her job? She's full time doing the land investing. I think that's yeah. uh, so. That's why I, well, I talk about stepping outside your comfort zone, Mimi. Cheers to you. I need to refill. Cheers to you. Good. I'm I'm very happy. Mimi, I'm stirring my martini for you. <laughs> no, awesome <laughs> job, Mimi. And uh, um, you know, it's great to have her as part of the team. She's awesome. And and she just left a geeky comment. Oh really? Because she said a good evening. You must have. She's saying Yoda. Oh, she's a Yoda fan. She's you talking know. Yoda there. <laughs> That's awesome. Is this the oh, refill oh. segment? Because I, I don't I don't see uh, he may not be able to make it tonight. Our typical uh, refill guy. Spill. Uh, you spill your drink. Matt Forbes, are you out there? No, he's not. He's not in the uh, attendee. It's all right. He's. I think he's going to be at boot camp, so that would be exciting. Because hey, we should talk about that quickly. Talk two about massive today. action again. How? Uh, let's go. Let's hear it. Two weeks from today, we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, toasting toasting in the happy hour, right? Yeah, this it's awesome. Boot camp's coming, you know. And, and I want to, you know, basically take a second and celebrate the people who took the massive action to go to boot camp. You know, it can be a little bit out of your comfort zone if you've never been to one to actually go with a group of people you're not completely familiar with and not sure what's going to happen and, you know, put yourself in a new environment, but it's awesome. You are going to love it. And we have many people that come back again because they realize the, the beauty and the power of it. But if this is your first boot camp that you're going to, 
Um, congratulations to you for go, taking the massive action to go. You're going to love it. It's awesome. I mean, you're going to get to see Mark live. Scott's going to be there. Scott Todd, of course, Scott Boston too, but Scott Todd. Uh, you're going to have Tate there, and Eric. I believe Mimi will be there. My wife and I go. It's just going to be phenomenal. It's just such a great crowd of people. I love it because I'm surrounded by some of my best friends who happen to be virtual friends, and I'm always inspired. I think you surround yourself with successful people and people that are really moving the needle in this business, and it just inspires you to go to a high level. So that's massive action, isn't it? That's swinging the bat, making a trip out to uh, Arizona in 110 degree heat to go to a boot camp. That's swinging the bat. That is swinging the bat. That is taking the leap for sure. Yes. Uh, I remember that uh, coming up on three years ago, the nervousness I felt even booking the trip to Las Vegas to go to boot camp. I mean, you know, that that's a huge step for some people just booking the ticket, just going there. Just, it is. It is. You're right. Yeah. I mean, this is a scary for some people who have never been to something. I don't know what to expect. Um, but but I, I always tell people, you know, it was a huge aha moment for us. Uh, you know, I, I knew after being in that room for just a couple of hours that, that this was, you know, something I wanted to be a part of. And uh, it, I don't know. It, it's a huge aha moment when you get to meet all these people with different gifts and different backgrounds and different stories and, and uh, we're all doing so well. So, I saw someone post it. It was Jeannie, I think, Morum. She posted about, um, I don't think, I don't, she may not have been there with Mark, but it's still, it's like turned into like a land geek kind of uh, mythical story. It was awesome. Someone kind of called Mark out on something and he, he made a live phone call to buy a piece of land and negotiated successfully uh, at the boot camp in front of everybody there. And they were like blown away because it was just smooth. It was masterful. It was awesome. It was inspiring. And these are the kind of things that happen. I mean, that's just one small example. Uh, but you will come away from this, as Mark always says, the clouds will dissipate. This is something that uh, really is going to move the needle. Talk about massive action. Talk about boot camp. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Very good. Okay. Hey, wait. I, I have a very special. I wish we I wish we had a few more viewers because this is going to be awesome. I have a very special thing lined up here. For the Boston Legacy segment. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is my favorite segment. I hope everyone else likes the segment as much as I do. I don't know. It's just uh, give me some shout-outs, people. This is funny, right? It's got to be funny. <laughs> it's the, the Boston Legacy segment, all right? In this segment, the community will learn a new Bostonian word, either a word that is commonly mispronounced by Boston by Bostonites, or a slang word that none of us understand. I think it's Bostonians. I don't think it's Bostonites. That's what I meant. So Mike, <laughs> Mike I'm going to spell a word. Okay. okay. And you need to re repeat the word back to me. I will do my best. Are you ready? I am trying to be ready. I'm ready. C-H-E-A-T-E-R. What? Are you trying to say cheetah? Cheetah. Now, are you saying like cheetah like an animal or cheetah like someone who cheat, cheats on cards? C-H-E-A-T-E-R. Cheetah. 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 Oh, a cheetah. Cheetah. Uh, see, when you say cheetah, I think that guy's cheating. He's cheating at cards. He's a cheetah. Yeah, he's a cheater. He's a cheetah. He's a cheater. He's not a cheetah. He's not a cheeto. He's not a cheetah. <laughs> Seriously. That's awesome. That is That's awesome. awesome. Could I have my segment then? I'm yeah, go ahead. Segment. Scott, would you? Uh, this is a new segment we're going to kind of bring out. Oh, right, right. This is the uh, bubblegum deal of the week. So, where you we celebrate. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I have the bubblegum. I love bubblegum. I eat this stuff by the, by the box. And this is to actually celebrate uh, like a deal or something. And what I want to do. Is, is basically uh, give a shout out. I already said her name, Jeannie Morum, Jeannie and Kurt. Um, Jeannie is becoming quite the eBay master. She's really taken it to a, a high level. She's learned some secret tricks by digging in deep. Uh, she just sold another parcel on there and I know she's going to continue, continue to crush it. So this is the bubblegum deal of the week for Jeannie. Hubba Bubba. Hubba Bubba deal of the week. Nice to you, Jeannie. We didn't really think this out. Now it's you and gum. We're supposed to talk. That's not Whose gum. idea was this to mix gum with beer? <laughs> I don't Let's know. just do the refill segment while we're at it. 
<laughs> huh? Jeannie, that was uh, serious though. Awesome job. I know that. And talk about someone that started out. I got to take the gum out. Sorry. Someone who started out a little bit uncomfortable, but worked her way through that, calling people and talking to people. Jeannie has come a long way, and she's going to really keep hitting it hard, and she's going to knock it out of the park with massive action. So awesome. Refill? I don't know about this bubblegum idea, dude. I like the segment idea, but. Yeah, you got to either swallow the bubblegum and get rid of it. It's just not working. <laughs> Eric Peterson is watching. Yep. Nice yep. to see you, sir. See you in two weeks. Eric. Eric's going to be live in two weeks. I can tell you that much. We'll David get him Holtz, on is that, is that my buddy from college watching? David Holtz. Nice <laughs> to see you, my friend. Ah, Barry Warren made a comment on here. Barry, I, I'm sure because we're in your neck of the woods. I'm hoping to see you at boot camp. Um, it's uh, awesome to see you on here as well. So, wow, we went through a lot of segments there. But, you know, <laughs> we're rolling. So We are rolling. We're usually let, a little more organized than this. No, but it's good. It's flowing. I think let's talk about that last point. We, are, we just talked about everyone needs a Yoda. Um, we did. And I think that uh, – Let's talk about the last part, massive action, right? So um, what would it be? Well, I think we, we alluded to this a little bit earlier, right? Um, yeah. Oh, wait, this is the part that, Jim, we're answering your question now. Is this the, uh, the done is better than perfect, right? Yes, this is the answer. This is going to answer his, this is going to indirectly answer his question about, he was like, is 80% of it, you know, effort or marketing? And he was talking about how he first accomplished the, hurdle overcame the obstacle of the uh of the of acquiring properties and now he's hitting that second big brick wall the marketing so yes go ahead scott this is for him all right so you know uh as we're moving forward as, as we're stepping outside of our comfort zone uh as we're taking on more than than what we think we can handle right what we need to realize is that uh action is most important than anything so in other words, to get something done, uh, you don't have to be perfect. You know, right. done is better than perfect. Scott, uh, Todd. Scott Todd, Scott Todd for sure. Um, so, you know, you need to, in order to climb Mount Everest, you need to move forward and you need to head up the, head up the mountain and take all the switchbacks. And um, it's, it's not going to be pretty along the way. You know, right. you might fall. You might have to get up and dust yourself off. It's not going to be a perfect journey, but as long as you're taking action and moving the needle forward, that's what's important. And uh, those imperfect actions will still move you in the right direction. How many of us have worried about uh, getting comps for our purchase agreements and uh sweating bullets over whether or not we think we've offered the right price. You know what? It's just a conversation starter. If you're a couple hundred dollars off, that's okay. You can renegotiate that later. But how many of us, you know, how many of us worry about that before we send it out? But you know what? We may not be sending out a perfect offer, but it still gets us deals in the end because we are able to renegotiate with the knowledge we have about the market or with our, with our selling skills. Absolutely. And so along these lines with no need to be perfect, I want to talk about, and this is for the question about the marketing, right? I want you to think of marketing as a parade. Okay. So if you'll, if you, yeah, if you'll, if you'll could visualize a mile long parade and you start posting a couple Craigslist ads, guess where your parade is just moved about five feet forward. You stop posting, the parade goes, er, it comes to a stop, a full stop, right? Parade stopped. There's somebody in that parade, somebody out there in the world, in this Craigslist community that's going to buy your land. Guaranteed, all our land sells. It always sells. So have confidence in that. It always sells. Now, you have to keep that parade moving forward. The only way to move that parade forward is by continuing to market with the Craigslist ads, going on to Land Moto, going on to Facebook, using these mechanisms to get that moving forward so the rest of the parade can see your parcel because every time you stop this picture everybody's sitting there line up with their popcorn they're waiting and where's here's all the horses wait where are the fire trucks where are the horses where's the parade 
Oh, the parade <laughs> stopped. It stopped back there. It only went. It only went a tenth of a mile. That. So, yes, having the 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 kind of uh, you know the perseverance to keep hitting it. Listen, I don't care if your ad gets flagged. It might be up for five minutes, but that's long enough for the right person to see that parade and buy your land. So your efforts are not for not. Your efforts are in not in vain. If you get it up there for one minute, it could be the one minute the right person clicks on there, sees it, and buys your land. So I don't care if they get flagged. I don't care. Keep posting. Keep going. Don't let it break you. It doesn't have to. Yeah, Craig, this is a bear. I know it is. But guess what? You can overcome it. You have Scott Todd's program that can enable you to take it to a higher level. You can get support from some people in the Langy community that do the coaching. This doesn't have to stop there, and it doesn't. You're going to keep hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, just like mailing. Massive action. Here's the other thing about massive action. You need to celebrate small victories. So you know what, Jim? I, I realize Craigslist is a bear. I realize selling is a bear. But you know what? If you get an email address or two out of it, you never know what's going to happen down the pike. That same person that completely, you know, uh, went the other direction with this particular property may come back to you six months from now because they are on your buyer's list. Right. So it is a success if you get an email address. It's not right. a monetary success currently, you know, maybe not, but down the road it could be. So uh, that's just something to celebrate. I, I consider it a win, and Scott Todd taught me this a long time ago. I consider it a win when I'm speaking to somebody and I get their contact info. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, listen, this Mark says it all the time. He says it at boot camp. The business, this business can kick you in the teeth just like any other business. You're going to get, but are you going to get up? You're going to lay down there? And, and uh, uh, what, no, you're going to get up. I mean, this business rewards action. This, so if your ads get flagged, I don't care. Keep posting. Keep looking. Keep changing. Keep maybe put it in the comments. Keep moving your feet. Scott Todd, another great quote. And another great quote down there, another great comment was, you see that? Eric, P Eric uh, Peterson saying we could use popcorn instead of gum. I love popcorn. That's Eric Peterson, you are a genius. I go Thank to the you for that because the bubblegum idea was terrible. I go to the movies for two reasons, the trailers and the popcorn. That's it. What's it called? The trailers and the popcorn. The popcorn. Can you... and, and the trailers. Yeah, I would spell that P-U-P-C-O-R-N. Exactly. Popcorn. The popcorn and the trailers. That's the mm -hmm. only reason I go. I, I, I want to I wanna be in a trailer. I love those things. So listen, I hope that answers Jim's question because it really is. It comes down to, listen, you, you took all that effort. You climbed over the wall. You're getting properties. You're doing the deal flow. And all of a sudden you hit another brick wall. It's like, oh, man, well, get your protein bar. Go take your protein drink. Go take a break. Go take a cold shower. Do what you got to do and hit that wall hot again. Don't quit. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Every parcel sells. Everyone. So many wonderful Bostonian words in that last, <laughs> in those last few sentences. Oh, Seriously, I can't even handle it. We're going to go to the uh, Facebook, uh, no, the uh, Shove It Quote of the Week. We're going to go to that. Oh, that, what, this one? There the it Shove is. Quote of the Week. Now, I was almost thinking that we shouldn't um, put this, but this has already been posted in the thing, so it's okay to reveal it, right? It's already been posted in the... Uh, in yeah, the Nick posted it, I think... I don't know if you posted it in the Facebook group or maybe in the coaching group, but one, one of the two. All right. Tell me if you can see it. Can you see this? Yes, to a degree. All right. Well, let me see. If you can uh, zoom in or not there, that's better. Okay. Well, explain the show at quarter of the week to people, Mike. So basically, listen, if you're new to this business, we talk about getting kicked in the teeth. Mark talks about it a lot. We send out lots of offers, right? Ours is a numbers game. Simple as that. That's why massive mailing brings deal flow, period. Um, but three to 5% of the people are going to accept our offers 1% to 2% close rate. Guess what? That leaves like 95% of the people who don't want to sell us. And a few of them might be upset. And some of them get very creative in the way that they uh, tell us how upset they are. So we don't bring this up because somebody could mistake the fact that we bring up the shove a core of the week's goal. Geez, I'm a little nervous. I don't want to, I don't want to get people angry at me. Listen, they're going to send you a letter. You know, it, it, they're going to you get, you get your P.O. box, right? Don't worry about it. Uh, they're going to call you, leave a voicemail on your Google Voice. Don't worry about it. You know, I used to have fun. I'd call them back because I like to. All these people can be converted, not into necessarily selling, but they can be converted to happy people. That's easy. But anyway, <laughs> this is this 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 is the quote. We, we actually featured the front. Do you remember what the envelope said on the front? It was uh, 
It was, oh, it was at the, you know, uh, something like bottom feeder. Uh, the front of this uh, envelope was pretty creative. It was, it was addressed to Nick the bottom feeder or something like that, wasn't it? Yes. So this is what was on the inside. Uh, he must have offered the guy 900. He's like 90,000 and a 2018. So if you want to buy my land, give me $90,000 and a 2018 Ferrari Lamborghini and 10 tons of marijuana and a real good bleep bleep. I'm not reading that. <laughs> I'm not reading that. Sorry. And then oh, down the bottom, it says, this is the shittiest offer I ever received. The last offer was 3,600. So do your homework. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's awesome. You know what? I love when you get those because you know you're in the right ballpark now. You know that, you know, get the popcorn out. It's ready for some action. You're about to get a deal because you'll get this and the very next one you'll get will be an accepted offer. And you'll be like, okay, that's the way it works. That's exactly right. I got a voicemail the other day. <laughs> the other day, a guy says to me, hey, he sounded so nice too. He really did. He wasn't he wasn't like an angry person, but he's like, yeah, this is a message for Scott. I just wanted to let you know that I will sell my parcel of land to you today. Oh, for, nice. For $1 million. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did he do this? $1 million. $1 million. <laughs> so give me a call and we can get that going. Okay, thanks. Bye. Oh, I'm man. so polite about it. Well, you know, polite. That's good. So anyway, It happens, right? But then the next does. thing the, the bottom line is this there are people out there who are distressed who are thankful to be able to hand this over to you and who will send you thank you letters they will uh, happy saying, buyers happy sellers happy on both sides exactly so let's let's wrap it up with a review of your four of your four key points number one all right, so it's all about massive action. First of all, you need to have a why. Why? We all have a why in this community. It could be financial freedom, could be time freedom, could be family, could just be an overall sense of security, could be a combination of all those things, right? Right. But in order to take massive action, in order to get a spark lit under your behind to do something, behind. you need a why. Hey, okay, okay. Okay. Huh? Accent. Beehive. Bee. I... <laughs> so that's number one. Number two. Number two, you got to push your limits. You got to take on more than you can handle, right? Deal, deal flow solves everything. Yes. You need more deals than you can handle. You need, uh, you, you just, you just got to push your limits. If you're going to get better, that means push you're going to reach your goals. You got to push your limits and step outside your comfort zone. Push mailings, push them. Throw them out. That's your number one priority is get massive mailings out so you can have deal flow. Deal flow solves everything. Number three. Number three, you need a mentor like Eric Peterson, Scott Todd, Tate Litchfield, Mike Zeno. Mimi Schmidt. Mimi McLean Schmidt. These are people in our community that Scott will. Bossman. Thank you. That will help you move forward. That will help kind of push you out of your comfort zone, right? Confidence, confidence and assured, like just like I'm doing the right thing is huge, right? So everyone needs a Yoda. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, there we go. Okay, next one. You like that? That yeah. was pretty good, right? Most people I know do Chewbacca, but you do Yoda. Anyway, number four. <laughs> Chewbacca. And number uh, four, wrap it up for me. Number four, wrap it up, four. I'll take it. Remember that song? Wrap it up. I'll take it. Wrap it up. No. Anybody around in the 80s when that came out? It was the best video ever. Anyway, go ahead. I'll play it for anyway, you. The, the, fourth, uh, the fourth item we talked about tonight in regard to massive action is just take action. Don't worry about being perfect. Done is better than perfect. Move the parade. Move the parade. I like that analogy. The from. Listen, one, two, three Craigslist ads. Great. Good job. Don't pat yourself on the back yet. Your parade went about five feet. It's a mile long. Get those ads out there. 40 leads to get a sale. Listen to Tate. He tucks the numbers. You got to get the ads out there. Do it. Do it and do it more. But celebrate small victories. Seriously. You can. Do you love lists, Mike? I love lists, right? On like 
there's a Google task list I yes, like. Yes, there's yes, a momentum. Yes. There's a checklist yes. on momentum I like. You know, I set myself up. I, I type all these things down that I need to accomplish, and I'm able to put a check mark by them, and I celebrate small victories, and I know that I'm taking massive action. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Kevin Waymeyer turned me on to strides this week. I haven't been using that, and uh, it's awesome. You can, uh, you know, it's just another way to track progress, right? Absolutely. Tell us, wait, let's give a tip of the week. Tell strides. us about it. So strides is a little app. I, again, Kevin Waymeyer and I were talking, and I'm sure this came up in the community one time before, but I just never really paid too close attention to it. But you get it on your phone, and uh, – Mine might be, hey, I want to, um, I'll do one thing to life and one thing to the business. One could be, I want to drink eight glasses of water a day. So every time I drink a glass of water, I swipe left and it gets my numbers going up. And it has reminders throughout the day, hey, you're drinking your water. This could be, strides could be very useful. For, hey, I want to post 20 ads on Craigslist today. Every time you post a couple ads, swipe, swipe. And if you don't, it's going to remind you. So yeah, massive action can be enabled by little apps. Nice. Very good. I like that tip of the week, my friend. All right. Well, what do you think? This has been a great nightcap if we do say so ourselves. <laughs> I, I think it's been pretty good. I think it's been pretty good. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, we, got, uh, we got one more show next week, and then... And then? Are we we're live? live? We're live in Scottsdale. Typically, that's a Friday night show, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it was during happy hour last time, so I think that's a good time to have it. Yeah. No, I think that, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was during happy hour. You're right. Hold on. Let me pull something up here for you because I want to make sure the outro is ready. So everybody listen, thank you for attending. And if you're watching us in the rerun world, we don't blame you not coming live, but, uh, uh, we'd like to see you live sometime. That'd be cool too. Yes. Spread the word about how amazing the show is, please. <laughs> yeah. I'll watch it on Netflix. <laughs> Scott Bossman. Mike Zeno. You do complete me. Thank you. It was great seeing you tonight. And with that, get ready for the outro. Here's the massive action. Oh, is that the tip of the week? I mean, that's the that's the uh, the the toast. Toast is the massive action. Here's the massive action. As I stir my cinnamon stick. <laughs> my gosh. Please. Use it as a straw. Or a